So this hospital was actually the first building that was ever erected here at Ford Chadbourne and it's built of sandstone and it consisted of just three rooms, a ward room, a dispensary and a storeroom. So look, you can actually see the chisel marks where the soldiers hand chiseled each one of these sandstone blocks. That's pretty amazing. And I've also noticed, if you come up here through the door that didn't actually have a door, the doorway, there's some graffiti. I don't know what it says, or how old it is. No. So did you know that when they were excav excavating this place, they actually found the remains of a basement? And they think that's well, several feet deep, but they found remains of what they believe was a trap door just here. So they think, because they found the hinges, <clears throat> and they believe that the steps went down into the basement, but after the Civil War, the soldiers filled it in. True story. And I like this other side of the wall here too. You can see closely, you got the, some of the old graffiti up in here. And then you can tell at this spot right here. So now, fun fact, you might not know, sandstone, when it gets very hot, turns a reddish color. And if you look up here, you can see through. So they probably would have been some kind of maybe stove or the cooker, and this would have vented out, which is just, it's remarkable. You can just see it and just to see things in this shape still. And it's, they have done some repair work, but I mean, the history of when this was just, when you it's think amazing. about it, how big this hospital is. So they had at any one point between 35 and 350 soldiers yeah. here. And this hospital is tiny. Right. And it was never completed. No doors and no windows. No doors and no windows. So you have creepy crawlies steaming in bed with you. Yep. Okay, the rabid skunk. Okay, I could tickle a skunk. The rattlesnakes, <laughs> yeah. no. Now it might be a little bit difficult to make out, but on this cornerstone is actually the original drawing for the building. See on the top here, there's the roof line, roof line down to the wall. And apparently all the dimensions when scaled up are a perfect match. Now we're heading inside the officer's quarters. There would have been one right next door, but this is the one that remains now, it's been refurbished, you can see. Now the whitewash we were referring to earlier in this bed, <laughs> very comfy. Look at the bathtub. Well, see, that's perfect. Just that's, white to. Yeah, just wash the bits that need washing. <laughs> and then to wash your hands and face, you've got your, your wash bowl. Yeah. And then, I don't know if you caught it, oops, I don't know if you caught it, but you've got a, a bucket to the side. Is that your chamber pot? I think it must be. Let me just, oh. It's still full. Oh. <laughs> no, it's empty. <laughs> but yes, that is your chamber pot. What a great neat. little, it is really cozy actually, you know? It's got that, that good vibe to it. I like it. And then in the next room. Wow. This is where all the graffiti is. So Where these are the soldier, this is the soldier's graffiti. 1875. 1874, 18, that can't be right, 1816. 1816, 1875, mm. in the window here. 1816 would be wrong, because the fort wasn't built then. See, you always get one joker. Yeah. 1906, there'd be a hooligan. Yeah. So some of this graffiti is more modern day. It was cowboys that were, after the fort closed, but there are a lot of graffiti here. There's a lot of graffiti here that dates back to the fort times. Mm -hmm. And did you know that 
seven or nine, it was either seven or nine Indians, Comanche, were captured for the death of two male riders from the fort. Anyway, they escaped. They did get shot. One came in here and eventually lost his life. There was a massive attack and all of these are the bullet holes. True story. And another bit to that story, this is the actual door that was kicked in by the soldier. And it's still standing here. Isn't that just amazing? So this is the double quarters, officers' quarters. So two families. Yeah. On either side. Let's take a look in here. So this was all the officers' quarters. Oh wow. Isn't this lovely? And later it became a family home. Yeah. And the smell of wood hits you right away as soon as you in the in the rock. Now this was actually destroyed, or a lot of it was destroyed by fire in the early 1900s, and it has been restored mm. to identically to uh, what it was before the fire. Right. And just a, uh, I mean, like so even down to the square nails. I know, pretty neat. Look at the baby bath. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> now. Do you know where the saying comes from? Don't throw baby out with the bathwater. I do know this one because in the old days it would go father, mother, kids, and then the baby was the last, which was in the dirtiest water. That's exactly when right. When they would toss it out. True story. And then into the next. So this these would have been thick walls. Yeah. So so two rooms. So this would have rooms. been the living room. Living room, dining room. Yeah, with the fireplace. The bedroom. Bedroom. The kitchen is a totally separate room. It's actually away from the house because of the heat. Yeah. And that's what they think caused the fire. They believe that it could have possibly been from the kitchen and the way the wind blew caught this. Took this out. So it. half of this building was pretty much totally destroyed. Yeah. Um. But what a grand job refurbishing all of this. And the thing too, which I really like that they've done is instead of whitewashing everything, they've left the rock wall intact because you can see the layers of history from the original rock to some of the plastering, original plastering that's all along here. And it's just, you say it tells the story even of the fire, how it shows. It's just, it's great to have these things like this. Just very well done. You seen this uh, wonderful oh, piano? Go on, give us a chain. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, incredible. So, remember we were talking about the fire? Yeah. This was be where the kitchen used to be. And they believe that this here was the actual fireplace. And this is where the fire started. Right. Wind coming along, blew and caught this side of the house. And the reason why they know that is because the dugout, which is, yeah, didn't get touched. Yeah, and it's right there, so. And yeah, like they said, the kitchen would have served these quarters, those quarters, these quarters over here. So it's like the community kitchen. Yeah, and I mean, you wouldn't want to cook inside when it's 110, 120 degrees outside. No. So yeah, the larder, the cellar, the root cellar, cold storage, the fridge, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I like they've got the the pulley system with the rock to keep it weighted, so. And that was the original. Yeah. Now, we can go down here, but there could be a couple of rattlesnakes, so I think we might yeah, get Yeah, we'll loose. leave them be. <laughs> you seen that carving on the corner of the wall there? JV? Is that what that says? Yeah, interesting.
Okay, so, you've got to take you to the well. Now, interesting, interesting story here. So the reason why the fort closed down in 1877, I believe it was, was because they ran out of water and ran out of supplies. Now, this well they were drilling, they drilled down 180 feet and no water. What they didn't know is if they had dr drilled an extra three feet, so 183 feet, they would have struck water and then the fort would never have had to have closed down. Which is pretty remarkable. But the one positive to that that we found out is since they could never use this as a well, they use it as a trash pit. Yeah, rubbish bin. So can you imagine what is down there? So they are, I think, they do want to excavate. Um, and then that you would literally go down in layers. Yeah. Of, in history. Go way back in time to the earliest. I mean, I'm sure they'll... Well, we have well, seen that people well, well, well. have dug stuff and it is still intact after all those years of being buried and smashed. You'd think everything would just be in pieces. There is actually a YouTube channel that does that. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond, below the plains. There's below the plains, adventure archaeology. There's, yeah. a, there's several but of them he that do digs, those. He digs down these places. But uh, yeah, so 180 feet. Is it 180 or is it just 80? Oh. I think it was just 80. Did I say 180? Yeah. It was 80. Yeah. So 180 would be like going through to Australia. Oh, yeah. So 80 feet and then three feet more. See, that's why you never give up. You keep going. So this was the barracks. Now this section is a hundred foot long and it housed a hundred soldiers. Yeah. Each soldier had his bed and a tiny little, he actually only had two foot of living space. Yeah. Can you believe that? So one single cot and a little locker. That's so it. So same each side. Had. So yeah, I mean with that. Both each side, and then they, you just had the, the walkway in the middle. Well, yeah, I'm 50 soldiers each side. I mean, and then yeah, the walkway, so it's not a lot of space, but I mean. And a fireplace at each end. Yeah, and keeping then us warm. The, and then the cook, the stove in the middle, so that you got warmth either side. No. Warmth no. from here, you would think? No, this wasn't here. Oh, is this? Oh, no, okay. No, this was just put here because they found this as an artifact. I see. And put in here. The only heating they had in here was the was fireplace the... Okay. at each end. And remember, 100 degree heat, 110 degree heat in summer, they wouldn't have the fires on. Plus, oh, yeah. with the amount of men, you know, the body heat yeah. and what have you. And of and course, the... one guy's going to be like, I'm cold, and the other guy's, I'm hot. And then behind here, that's where the, I guess, the officers, some of the officers slept. Nice. So, and again, you can see the walls where they Yeah, and chisel marks of just, and that's, like we say, it's one of those things where you see recreations and things like this, but somebody actually was using a hammer and a chisel yeah. to dig this out and then place it here. And it's uh, just- we, we mentioned this before, the soldiers were actually in full combat uniform Regalia, when they yeah. were doing that. And it's just that it's in, it is incredible. You can physically touch history. You're reaching back 125 years in time. It's just, oh. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? It is. And, and it's, I love places like this where you can soak it in. You can walk back through it. You just imagine what it would look like, the conversations they would have in here. Oh. So this looks like it's kind of like a, a replica mm. of what their cupboard would look like. That's the sort of size. Yeah, that's all your belongings. Pretty neat. Huh. Now, No trip would be complete, but unfortunately we can't do that on this trip. Yeah. 
so they would PP outside. And the reason why they know this is because the artifacts they found were in really, really bad condition because of the, the, ac urine, the yeah, acid in the that. urine. Mm -hmm. But they actually haven't ha found a physical outhouse yet. They are still searching for it. Mm. So this is how people would enter. <laughs> oh, wow. This area is where they would literally stuff their food and get back on the stage. Yeah, because they had it. So I understand it that this is the only 100% refurbished Butterfield Stage Station in all of Texas. That is correct. And yeah. that is just... And this is the original stagecoach station and the original location. Yeah. And this was the stagecoach. Stage. <laughs> now, did you know, I only just learnt this today, actually, that up to nine people were inside of this. So you had three on each side and then three in the middle. I don't know how you would get your feet in. Yeah. And they only had two breaks a day. 40 minutes maximum was the break. And then you'd have to get back on board and go. And this would be the ride. Yeah. I would be seriously seasick. And then the dust, because you've got no windows, so the yeah, heat. Just the um, shades. What, uh, yeah, I mean. And did you know, from St. Louis to California was $200, and that was back in those days. Yeah, I don't know what that would equate to today, but. And the US mail. And then the chuck wagon. Oh, and I, wow, I've just seen something that takes me back. I just got uh, a little bit of emotional. I got a feeling of nostalgia big time. Um, when I was a kid, we had jars like these. The exact same logo in the sugar one. I believe we had the sugar one. That's, wow. I don't see those very often, so but, that was pretty neat. Yeah. So yeah, this was the chuck wagon, a cowboy chuck wagon. Good old chuck wagon. Now, why did it have that name? Did the first guy that invented this, was his name Chuck? No, I was led to believe that it's because it was just chucked in. You know, you just chuck all the food chuck in. Chuck up the ingredients and make something as you go? I don't know whether or not that's true. Huh. Let us know in the comments below. So now through. And then as you walk in here. Oh yeah, we'll just show real fast. You can see yep. there's the original doorway. That's the original doorway. This would be the stagecoach master's quarters. And him and his wife would just live in this one room. They would cook, they would serve all the meals for the stagecoach and the drivers and the passengers. Mm. And you can see the back wall, that is original stone wall. And the fireplace, as well as the wall right here. This wall here, yeah, yep. is original. And I can't remember, was it? 24? 24 inches. Mm -hmm. And the reason why all the walls here are 24 inches is to do with the heat. So the external walls would heat up during the day, and then at night, would penetrate and warm up the house at night time. Mm -hmm. And then vice versa for the day. Yeah. Hence, while inside here, it's when perfect cool. temperature. Mm -hmm. When outside, it's hot True and breezy. True story. You're hot yeah. and breezy. <laughs> so that's their living quarters, one room, another doorway, and this now is 
the tack room. So wagon wheels would be repaired in here, um, belts, buckles, everything to do with tack. Right, now, and like we've said, because that, back in those days, if they needed something, they had to make it. Yeah, so, so everything was made on the spot here. You couldn't just go down to your DIY store and pick it up. Right. So there's all of this is all dates, various dates, but you've got, and I'd, I don't know the terminology for a lot of this stuff. Well, that's stuff. a little miniature anvil, so that's probably for, you know, very small increment yeah. things to fix on and maybe rings and things. So shoe and harness repair outfit is here. Oh look, it's actually got it on the side. That's neat. Now, what's the sanitary churn? Manufactured by Superior Churn. I mean, over uh, December 13, 1910. But what is it? Well, I would just think it's a regular churn. But why is it called a sanitary churn? Maybe it was a gimmick in the day to get people, don't just buy a churn, buy a sanitary churn. Possibly. But so I'm probably way off and somebody's gonna tell me, you should shut your mouth. <laughs> That's gonna be edited out. Yeah. That's another comment for us. Let us know what a sanitary churn is because we don't know. So we've come out of the tack shop, tack room, and now there's the last. Original we are wall. going to be walking in. This is where the original wall was. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to have to go this side and pretend. This was the feed storage for the horses, and the feed was either hauled in or grown by local farmers. And I believe they had up to 80 horses here. They always had extra just in case one was poorly. 